Just before Hurricane Irma last year, the governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands, Kenneth Mapp, issued a remarkable and disturbing executive order that authorized the seizure of private guns and ammunition from citizens on the islands. The hurricane has been over for nearly a year, but Mapp has continued to renew that order, setting the precedent that Virgin Islands residents can have their weapons seized by the government at will any time. Why is this happening in a territory controlled by the United States? Some lawmakers are asking that question. Congressman Bob Matt represents Utah. He is the chairman of the National Resources Committee, which oversees U.S. territories, and he joins us. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for coming on. This seems like something that couldn't happen in any place controlled by the United States, and yet it is. Why? Well, it ought not to happen. And in fact, ironically enough, after Katrina hit in New Orleans, the mayor tried to do that same kind of executive order. Eventually, the courts ruled that was blatantly unconstitutional. So this is this is the question. And 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 the governor has said different things about it. He, he did issue the order that would have allowed them to confiscate weapons and ammunition, and it says also other property in the law. I don't know how you define that one. But he's also said he never intended to do it. This was merely a, may, a way of getting his National Guard to get ammunition and guns without using the normal procurement system. It's, I don't know what that means. So what it does mean is that our committee, and we are sending a letter with, with uh, Chairman Goodlatte from the Judiciary Committee, asking them for some documentation and the information to find out if any guns actually have been seized at any time. And number two, why in the hell would you make this order in the first place? And then why would you keep renewing it? He's renewed it six different times, well after the danger has gone there. And third, trying to realize if, if a, a hurricane, as devastating as those two hurricanes were, if that ever justifies the denial of a civil liberty or the denial of a constitutional right. Yeah, why why not just that. ban free speech? People say inconvenient things during disasters. Why not put them in jail for that? Uh, it would seem consistent with what they're trying to do in here. Just, bec just because there is an emergency, and I'm not denying. I've been there. I know how devastating that hurricane was for the islands. That still does not justify what this appears to justify. And once again, we don't know if it's actually been used or implemented or if anything has been confiscated. That's part of the information we want. But then we do want to ask why you'd actually do this in the first place. And as I said, this, the territorial law that allows this to take place is very similar to what was ruled unconstitutional after Katrina. I covered Katrina. I was there. And that's exactly the moment when you need a gun, when lunatics are preying on the weak, which um, is what happens. That's one of the purposes of, of why the Second Amendment yes. is not about hunting, it's not about collection, it's an individual right of self-defense. Exactly. Mr. Chairman, thank you for coming on. No, I hope you'll get you. to the bottom of it. Thanks. And we're going to send the letter out tonight. He'll be getting it. We're going to be looking into this. Amen. Thank you.